Everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, we're gonna do part three of our fig tour because things, if you're not aware, look very different out here from parts one and parts two. Uh, the patio has certainly changed around. Things have been moved around. Um, we've set up our irrigation. We've done quite a bit in terms of these fig trees to get them um, in the position they are right now. And I have a couple videos gonna come out very soon talking about the different things that we've done to get these trees to this particular point. Um, I think it's really important and it's really key for you guys that are growing them to understand all this different stuff that's, that's going on. We did cover quite a bit in parts one and two on just about every single variety that I'm growing or just about every single variety that I wanted to convey to you guys uh, and talk about to you guys. Uh, that's not what today's video or today's tour is going to be about. about. And I really wanted to get this, this part of it out. Actually yesterday I wanted to have, instead of part two, I wanted to have part two take place today. Because today is not only um, you know, how everything looks different, it's also two and a half weeks later after yesterday's video. Uh, of part one and part two. Part one and part two were filmed on May 7th, May 8th. Today is Memorial Day, so happy Memorial Day to everybody. I hope everybody is enjoying their time off. But also, um, you know, that's two and a half weeks later, so everything looks way overgrown. I mean, it's kind of insane to really compare. I mean, I really want you guys to kind of go back to part one or part two look at the trees and what they looked like and then now come to this video and observe how different everything looks right now it's kind of insane um at least i've been really amazed by it it's it's just incredible what fig trees can do when they wake up at a reasonable amount of time and then the temperatures finally warm up because here in pennsylvania it has been quite warm we've had a really amazing april just to recap the early May portion uh, of May was just not not very conducive. It was a little wet. It was also pretty cool. Um, then after the early May had passed, we've just been nonstop with warm temperatures. It's been really nice to see. A lot of the stuff that loves the warmer temperatures has been really enjoying it, just like the figs. So that's really what's been happening and why we're getting such incredible growth. Almost everything now has been pinched in my yard which is kind of insane to think about because when we did the video on pinching very recently we talked about how i would pinch on may 15th uh i would pinch on may 1st i'd pinch on may 15th june 1st june 15th and then july 1st but i was able to come out here this year because of the steps that i've taken and because of all that excess heat this year we're actually able to pinch sometime on the 25th of May on just about every variety in a container. It's actually, it's actually pretty insane. So what that means is for a lot of these trees, and let's, I guess we can kind of begin the tour here. Um, for a lot of these trees, they're fruiting now. They're putting out these little figlets. If you guys can see that. And, um, you know, that is kind of a really good indication that not only are we gonna get fruit by August 1st, 90 days from today, some of them are a bit further advanced, you know, like uh, like this tree here, this is my Socorro Black. And you can see the figlets are a bit more advanced. Um, I would expect the trees that look like that, you know, maybe even my Italian 258 here, will fruit for us sometime around August 15th um, but a lot of my early varieties that don't necessarily take 90 days from pinching they may take maybe 70 days or 80 days I would think those are also gonna fruit maybe sometime around August 15th and a good amount of them a ha like a really good amount of them are gonna fruit for me August 1st which is really great to see here you can see Sanguinato putting out fruits. Um, Sanguinato, by the way, we don't know if it is common, but a friend of mine in California, who's in Northern California, does not have the wasp, and he has fruited that 
So I'm pretty confident that it is common. But across the board, I've just been, um, the point is I've been really, really happy with the production, how much growth all these trees have put out, and then now taking off the tips. And now they're now putting out that really small main crop that's pretty much just covered head to toe on the tree. It's been amazing to see. We have had a few Braba that have dropped or look like they're going to drop. And someone had asked me about their figs dropping and why they're dropping. And it's just, there's so many reasons why that could be occurring. But if they are Braba, it's very common for them to drop. Here's a Colded on Blanc Braba that's gonna drop, I imagine. We have a, a Socorro Black Braba over here that's gonna drop. Uh, there's a lot of Braba on these trees for whatever reason this year. And on varieties that normally don't put out Braba, like here's one over here, Paradiso. And Paradiso actually is going to ripen its Braba. It's putting out main crop. But Paradiso is a known Braba producer. Same thing with my Violet de Bordeaux types. If we go over here to my Petite Albique, it's the same thing. We pinch the tips, it's putting out main crop on this branch here. And then it also has four Braba down there that just are not going to go anywhere. Um, also with the Valet Calda, we took off the tips very recently. And here's the Braba looking strong and looking healthy. And that's kind of one reason why these could this could happen. I've been finding that if I pinch these varieties, the Braba seems to fall off. And I don't know why that is. Uh, there could be other reasons for it. Brava are very unknown to a lot of fig growers. We still not really have the greatest handle on Brava and what, why they do what they do, you know? Um, so the point is, it could be a number of many different things. A big one I know for sure is a change in environment. If your environment changes very quickly, you're going to have that Brava drop. One Brava producer that has been pretty much incredible this year is my Nuruciola de Elba. And this guy had 10 Braba on it. It dropped about three or four now. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're at seven from original 10. But all these are holding strong. And I think we had a lot of them drop, those three drop specifically because this tree was just having to do a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of Braba for such a young tree. It's a lot of energy to be put into that. And it's also trying to grow. It's also trying to put out new leaves. We're also pinching it. So not only have we formed all these crazy amounts of Braba, but we've pinched the tip. And actually, it's going to put out main crop in the next week. Especially if this heat continues like I, uh, I think it will. We've also got a ton of growth very recently, just across the board. I mentioned that, but even on these really young trees that uh, were pretty much cut down all the way to the base in this row here that really were doing nothing. These are the weaker trees, the younger trees, and look at this growth. I mean, very soon I can come in here, probably sometime around June 15th is what I, my plan is. This one was already pinched. So sometime around June 15th, even on the really young trees that were in one gallon pots that we had stuck in these five gallon containers for production purposes for next year, um, you know, these guys are starting to do their thing. Others, you know, of course they haven't. We're gonna have to wait to see if this guy has even taken, if, if this guy's gonna take. It seems likely that it's not. This guy here has certainly taken, it looks like, but you never really know until it puts out a few more leaves. We have an Aishia black graft here. We've got things like Col Noir. Um, we also grafted our San Baggio up here because I've been having lots of trouble with uh, people breaking my trees in the ground, whether that's, I think a deer had come in and actually ate off the top of one of my Campaneri trees. Um, I also had my brother step on my San Baggio in the ground. <laughs> uh, I think we had some lawn guys who cut the grass, actually chopped down two of them. 
as well. So these really young, just super small trees over here that you could barely even see. And it's kind of like, you know, yeah, you can barely see it. So you can't really blame them too much. Um, I need to start protecting them. I think I'm gonna have to get chicken wire or put some like stakes around them, especially before the, the lawn guys come around again, probably tomorrow and cut the grass. But I wanna show you guys these production trees. We're still not done adding trees into this like little list here of what is going to be my main producers in future years but uh, for the most part we have things like Col Noir, we have Aishia Black UC Davis, uh, we also grafted here Pisaluto from um, JD down in Louisiana that is a really incredible fake um, no one really knows about it except for JD and of course myself because I put a lot of time into researching these things and um, that is an insanely good fig from the looks of it uh, so we'll see what happens with that one we also have Campanieri we have tons of Campanieri trees so even if one dies it's like uh, it's not the end of the world but that's the goal here we have some suckers or some points uh, along the uh, the tree here that are trying to leaf out and I like to take these off especially if we're grafting them this here I believe is probably yeah Lampira one this is Colonel Littmans I think Colonel Littmans is going to take the place of all the black Madeira types whether that's Italian 258 Black Madeira, Figo Preto, Black Madeira KK. I think that uh, Colonel Lippmann's is going to be king. But even Bass's favorite, I mean, there's so many of them out there now. Black Tuscan. Here's Narino. This is uh, also Moro di Caneva. It's another name for it. Uh, we have here, I believe, Smith. 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 This is Aishia Black UC Davis. We actually have a fig forming right here on this very small rooted cutting. Here's Azores Dark. We actually were able to pinch this very soon, or very recently, on the 25th. And I think this guy is actually going to, uh, it's definitely gonna fruit, but I'm very surprised to see that because it got such a late start, it's actually done pretty well. Um, here we have, I think another Smith. Here is Campanieri. Another Smith up here. And by the way, we pinched our Smith in this pot. Uh, we also have Aishia Black UC Davis. This is a Smith graft. This is a Campanieri graft. Now forming a nice Franken fig. This is Azores Dark. Another Azores Dark. And then this is Violette de Marseille. This is a Black Celeste um, that you can actually find pretty commonly throughout the United States if you look hard enough. But I have really high hopes for all the figs I just mentioned, especially the ones that have been proven so far, which is Aishia Black, Azores Dark, Smith, Campanieri for the most part. I mean, these are really, really incredible figs that deserve many copies um, or deserve me to make many copies of them. Um, what else did I want to show you guys? Uh, oh, I want to give you guys a nice little update to some of the in-ground trees. They've been taking their sweet time, I have to say. Um, one little standout variety here, <laughs> which is, I knew this one was going to do this, because this is Violette Sapor, and Violette Sapor puts out a lot of fruit. This is a really small rooted cutting that has four figs on it already. Four figs. And in fact, a lot of my boards just soak grease, which we think is very similar to Violet support, which you can actually see over here, also has fruit on it. And these are very precocious, very easy to fruit varieties. That uh, That's a big part of why I wanted to put them in the ground, is that even if they were to die back all the way to the ground and re-sprout, um, at least they fruit so easily, you know? Um, and this is actually, even though there's only one fruit here on the Borgia Soak Grease, I've taken off many fruits off of a lot of the Borgia Soak Grease cuttings that I've been rooting, and you can see some in those bins there. 
but yeah so here's some of the in-ground trees we have a few that just are not doing anything and I think they may be dead or something may have happened this is the Dow Osa that we planted a while ago we planted this this is the first tree that we planted here in this row and it's very strange I don't know what to think of it we also have my black Zadar which I think is also dead. We had a, a really healthy black Sadar. We air layered it off for a friend last year and something must have happened to it in storage or even just moving them and it lost a lot of roots. So I actually chopped off the top because the top was dying back. In order to save this cutting, we're just gonna stick it in the ground and see if it, if it takes. And then also the mother plant here, which does have some roots attached, but to be honest with you, it's very unlikely that this is going to root out um, or continue to grow and leaf out. I did try to save a couple buds and I think I grafted two of them here and only one of them is still on there. So it's very unlikely I think that uh, that variety will continue on for me. But you can see some of the in-ground trees are finally doing their thing. And it's really towards the end of May now, which really stinks because these trees need to get a better head start than this. So we'll, we're gonna work on that and really try to improve this even more next year. I think it only sort of gets better from here. But this is the Black Beauty 10 and you can see how thick this growth is that has come out of this tree. So this is good to see, of course. We could probably come in here very soon and pinch this particular limb. Um, let these other ones grow out a bit more and then we'll pinch them a bit later in the season. What I certainly want is for every single one of these trees in here to fruit. Slow down that vigor. We've also added very recently, you can kind of see it, is lime. And we've added a ton of lime in here. We talked about this on an episode of Fruit Talk. Why are we adding lime? Well, it's going to increase the pH and it's going to hopefully increase the fruit quality is my goal. It sort of does the same thing with wine grapes. That's what we talked about was wine and we talked about soil in that episode of Fruit Talk. Here's actually a smith that we had planted in the ground. We're going to see how hardy this guy is, but very soon we can pinch him, which is really good to see. Believe it or not, he's not that far behind the other Smith trees in the pot. So it's not really that big of a difference I'm seeing. Between them planted here in the ground in these mounds, I don't think it's really all that different than the container trees. So it's really good to see. And that was the whole objective with this whole planting style here. Um, you can also see some really other small and young trees that we got in the ground. We've added cinder blocks. We've added some brick. We've added the rocks. We have some of the other in-ground trees over here. This is my um, Nero 600M, which has come back really strong. I mean, a lot of these trees, because they're so young, because they were only in the ground for about a year, they have really gotten hit hard by the cold, and some of them have come back really well. And it's really good to see, because that's what you want. You want them to come back strong. And if we come over here, we have our, our Preto in the ground, which is just not doing anything. So it's not like, you know, just green grass everywhere. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not great in every location and every tree, but it is what it is. That's why you have many trees to help balance this out for you. We also have the Noir de Barbantine here, which is literally just now putting out leaves. It's pretty, it pretty, it stinks actually how long it's taken for this one to wake up because in the same location for the most part is the Italian 258 which is also growing very vigorously. The Nero 600M down there and the Pastelliere, there's no real difference in microclimate here. We have one that's dead and then the Noir de Barbantine which is just really slow. Um, so it's kind of interesting to see how this is all working out. It's it's a bit disappointing in certain things and it's great to see it in others, but overall that's kind of the game of what God I'm falling all over here. Sorry, sorry guys. <laughs> Alright, um let's bring you guys around to the greenhouse because we not only have 
taken a lot of trees out of the greenhouse. Um, I took a lot of them out that had a great head start, that had great form. We put some of them over here, like our Galicia Negra, our Coldenon Blanca Negra, our Socorro Black, our Italian 258. We put a lot of these trees out here that didn't need any more heat from that greenhouse because they were already getting it and had already received it earlier in the season. We have a lot of them here that also got that really nice head start. As you can see, this is my De La Senora. What a weird fig, huh? Look at that. Super long stem. <laughs> um, and you know what's interesting about that, having this long stem, is that it's very easy to harvest. You don't want to break off when you harvest these figs. You don't want to break them off at the neck. You want to break them off at the stem exactly where it attaches to the branch. Definitely for commercial uh, potential as well. I and mean, that's really important when you're doing this commercially. Here's a really great fig that's got a great head start is the Fico Nita. And uh, it's looking very different than last year. I'm excited to see what it does, if it improves at all. Uh, this is a strange fig. And it's put out fruit very early with the help of the greenhouse. I think the greenhouse, I know the greenhouse really just does wonders for varieties that are very early. Um, if you have an early variety and you stick it in the greenhouse, it just goes nuts putting out tons of fruit. So what we've done, like I said, is we took some out of the greenhouse and then moved some in. And these are the varieties in here that I want them to kind of continue to grow, or I just didn't feel like moving them out just yet. Like this tree here has already got fruit, you know, all over this thing. This is a nice little Franken fig of four different varieties down in there. We've got our Del Sen Wami Gran. This is a fig that I really wanted to get a nice head start on. Because this is an incredible fig. Del Sen Wami Gran, guys. Uh, you need to pay attention to this particular fig. This is a, a green black Madeira for sure. I mean, there's white Madeira number one, but that is in no way anywhere close to uh, black Madeira, whereas this one actually is. And um, I'm really excited to have earlier fruits off that one. We've also got our Ponte Tresa that's doing well, putting out fruits for us. But these have been in the greenhouse for some time. So what I've done with trees that didn't get a head start or didn't get as much of a head start as I would have wanted, like this is my De Tresa Splace, we moved that tree in the greenhouse to help get that excess heat, really get this stuff going. Here's my Smith that also didn't get the greatest head start because we had really taken off four air layers off of this tree. And we've showed you guys those uh, with the production trees, right? We made copies for ourselves. And you can see now that we've pinched it. In fact, we've pinched it in three different locations. That's good to see because I want these lower branches down here that are a bit weaker. You can also see some down here. These are the branches that I want to grow um, and then maybe later in the season, I can also pinch them and get more fruits that way. Uh, we'll have to see if that works out, but any excess heat I can give it, especially at night, because we're still, even though the daytime temps here are probably uh, 70, 80 degrees, the nighttime temps are like 50. So because they're 50, maybe in the high 50s, maybe just approaching 60, we really want them to stay above 60 at all times, especially if you can get them over 65, that's even better because then these trees really get kick-started even further than just having great daytime temperatures. Uh, we've also moved in here, what else? This is my Planera that really took its time getting going. I mean, it is. <laughs> it was really upsetting because I have not had good fruit set, good fruit quality. I mean, this tree and some other trees, it's just weird how it works out that just certain trees just suck I mean you kind of have to start over I think with certain varieties you know like what I should do is really just start this whole thing over and I think if it doesn't do well this year if a certain tree isn't doing well in general 
you may not even be able to just say that it's the variety. You may just have to start over. And it's kind of sad to see, but it's true. Um, here's my Virgino Del Nord. Also got a pretty late start, but we're getting it in here and we've pinched it and it should be fruiting for us right now. Yep. So really good to see. We still have some other limbs here that need more time to get larger and we're gonna pinch them a bit later, but I'm trying to pinch any branches that I can because that's gonna induce those fruits earlier. Get them to ripen at the right time. And if they get to be ripen at the right time of the year, I'm gonna have a great, a better idea of what that quality of the fruit is, is exactly like or what it should be like. Uh, you know, the, the fruit that's gonna come off of these branches are probably gonna ripen sometime in September, which at that time of the year is not the best time for the figs. Here's another good example of why some branch, some trees just don't do well. And you can see here, this branch is just littered with FMV. This branch looks semi-healthy, but this one's looking way better than the other two. And it's just really strange how these figs work. I mean, just certain trees just don't do well. And it's just strange. So I know for a fact that if you were to kind of start over with some of this stuff, um, you could really get your tree into a better condition. I know that it's not ideal <laughs> to have to start over on your tree. Maybe it's already two or three years old, but that's kind of sometimes what you got to do. And it's, it's also good in that regard to have many copies of the same variety. Um, but that's, I think, guys, for the most part, what I wanted to cover in this video is show you guys really the big differences one other thing I think I need to show you guys really quickly um, that I've been really excited about because this I think really demonstrates the best of the differences between prior years and this year but also um, how incredible the growth has been on these trees so if you saw part one and you really saw the beginning of part one this is the the trees that we pointed out we talked about how this tree wasn't really that far ahead and it was kind of just leafing out it was just budding out um, whereas this tree behind it had put out pretty good amounts of growth and that's kind of was really good and then I was like oh well this is the tree because it's just leafing out this is normally what our trees look like at this time of year and that was on May 7th but now two and a half weeks later I mean it's it, it grew really fast. It went nuts with all this excess heat. I've pinched it. Um, it's just really good to see that <laughs> all this heat has really been insane. And even though this tree is indeed still behind this one, it's still in a good position this year to give me some good quality fruits. So that was part three, guys, of the fig tour. I need to come out here, in fact, today and film quite a bit because... There's a lot to talk about. I haven't gotten a chance to come out here and do anything. And the, the microphone, again, I'm sorry, if it was making noise in this video, that's something we just have to deal with for a short, a short longer, short time longer. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and I'll catch you all for tomorrow's video. Talk to you all soon. Take care.